So I was sitting in class at the beginning of my junior year, getting ready to start learning a new language. And as we started learning it, the process felt very familiar, because I had done it all two years before in French 1. Now, every time you learn a language, you usually follow the same process. You learn the most important words, and then how to put them together in a sentence. And then eventually, once you've learned enough, you're able to start expressing your ideas through the language. Now, it may come as a surprise that the language that I was learning wasn't Spanish or German or any of the other languages we think of students learning in schools, but that I was sitting at my desk in front of my computer, getting ready to start learning the computer programming language C++. Now, as we started working on the first Hello World program, which is a very simple program that every new coder starts with, we followed that same process. We learned the most important keywords, and then the structure of the program, and then eventually we had learned enough that we were able to start writing our own programs. Now, these programming languages have similar functions, structures, and are even processed by the brain in a similar way to natural languages, and yet, in almost every school system in the country, they're not taken as a language credit. Now, like I said, they've got a similar structure. In English, we have a noun, which is a person, place, thing, or an idea. In programming, we have literals, which is anything that's taken at face value. In English, we have pronouns, which are words that take the place of a noun. And in programming, we have variables, which take the place of a literal. And we even have verbs or operators, which allow us to show and do action. Punctuation is really important, too. In programming, if you drop a semicolon or a bracket, it can make the program completely impossible to read, or worse, it'll start doing things that you didn't expect it to do. In English, we've got the same problem. If you drop a comma, you can go from a nice family dinner <laughs> to cannibalism, which is never good. So, like I said, the, the brain even processes them in a similar way. In fact, a brain scan study done by some researchers in Texas found that when subjects were asked to analyze a snippet of Java code, there were five areas of the brain that were activated. And of those five areas, three of them are known centers for language processing. Now, this shows that when the brain approaches a block of code, it does so the same way that it would approach a block of any text from any language. Now, the purpose of school is to prepare students to become contributing members of society. And as technology becomes more integrated into society, we need to be exposing them to the new technology. And I transferred to a different high school after two years where I could focus on computer programming in depth. But before I switched, the school that I was at had six periods a day for four years. And of those six periods, four are reserved for your core classes for all four years. You also have three periods reserved for a foreign language. And then between the core classes, the foreign language, and all the other required electives, that leaves three periods when a student could take programming and become exposed to the concept. But if programming were to be taken as a foreign language, now that becomes six periods when a student who may not have otherwise sought out a programming class could take a programming class discover that it's something that they enjoy or that their brain works in a way that makes it easy for them to understand, and then they pursue it through high school, through college, and then into a career that they never would have had the chance to experience had they not been given the opportunity to learn about the concepts in the first place. Now, like I said, I switched high schools after two years to go to a school where I was able to focus on programming in depth. And because of that, at the end of my senior year, myself and a few of the other people in my program, including some juniors who were only even halfway through the program, were offered an internship opportunity with a nationally renowned research institute working with computer technology. And for those of us that were seniors that then graduated, that internship turned into part-time employment while we continue our education in computer science. 
Now, back in October of 2017, at Google's Pixel launch event, they announced Google Pixel Buds, which are advertised to be capable of translating 40 languages in real time. Now, anybody that's used Google Translate knows that that technology <coughs> definitely isn't perfect. <laughs> but as time moves on, it'll become more advanced and more intuitive and easier to use. Now, when a student learns a new language, they unlock a whole new part of the world in brand new and exciting ways. And that's an experience that every student should have. But when a student learns to code, they unlock the full potential of every phone, tablet, or computer that they'll ever come in contact with. And with that potential comes the ability to communicate with anybody at anywhere at any time. Now, it's projected that by 2024, there will be roughly 1.1 million computer jobs in the United States, and only 45% of those jobs will be filled. And by 2026, 3.5 million, and only 17% will be filled. Now, it makes no sense that out of a country of over 325 million people, only 500,000 will be qualified to fill these positions. That's less than one-eighth of 1% 1 of the population. That means that out of a high school population of 2,000 students, two and a half are going to graduate, go to college, and become qualified for these jobs. Now, if we don't have the workforce to fill these positions, and who will? Well, by, 2020, by 2012, Estonia had launched a program to teach computer programming to every student from first grade all the way through 12th. And a study done in 2014 found that there were plans to add computer programming to the curriculum in 12 European countries, including Bulgaria, Cyprus, Poland, and Lithuania. There were even plans to add it in in seven more countries. Now, this idea is currently being looked at by the United States Air Force. Captain Mike Kanan, the US Air Force Enterprise Lead on Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence, and a member of the 2019 Forbes 30 Under 30 list, is working on introducing a program that would take computer programming languages and treat them like a foreign language in the Air Force. Currently, in the Air Force, airmen are tested for their current abilities with or their aptitude to learn a new language. Captain Kanan hopes to add programming languages like Java, C++, and Python to the list of languages that students are tested for. It's not even just the Air Force. At General Electric, every new hire is required to take at least one computer coding class, regardless of whether they're ever going to touch code in their job. It's not even a new idea. By 2000, and Florida, Kentucky, and New Mexico have all attempted to pass legislation that would add computer coding to the list of foreign language, languages that students are able to take for graduation. Now, those states failed, but Texas and Oklahoma didn't. Oklahoma's graduation requirements state that a student must complete two years of a foreign language or two units of a computer technology course. And at the end of the summer of 2017, lawmakers in Texas passed a bill that would add programming languages to the list of languages that meet the requirements for the foreign language credit for graduation. This goes even farther back than the last few years. When my grandfather, one of the people that I've looked up to while I've started my computer science career, was in his junior year of high school. He was offered an opportunity to do his senior year of high school at Penn State University. During the acceptance process, they found out that he didn't qualify because he had never taken a foreign language credit. He was able to work with some of his teachers 
and convince the admissions department that because of all of the programming languages he knew, that was enough proof for them to waive that requirement. And he was able to do his senior year at Penn State. So my question is, if my grandfather was able to make this case 40 years ago, <laughs> in 2019, isn't it time that we reevaluate our educational system and actually start preparing students to be successful in the world of tomorrow? Thank you.